<laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and all you dear souls. I am here with Mary Lee LeBay, who I have one of my certifications from in becoming a, mm -hmm. a certified hypnotherapist. And she just happens to have some courses mm -hmm. in the near future. And I'm so excited to talk with you today, Mary. Oh, about thank you. <laughs> I'm excited to be here with you. It's going to be a fun day, and I hope we get lots of um, people with questions, because I love answering questions. <laughs> yes. If you have any questions about hypnotherapy, hypnosis, or becoming a hypnotherapist, if that's something you have ever thought about, you're in the right place. Or questions about past life regression and self-discovery and all of that. Uh, speaking of past life regression, I have had three back-to-back -back amazing past life regressions Ooh, with my clients. I want to hear about those. <laughs> For instance, uh -huh. you're set an intention or have a question going into a session. Mm -hmm. So uh, this client question is 85 year old man wow. wants to know why he's been given this gift of being able to be aware of what we would call ghosts or spirits that have left oh, the body and particularly exciting. spirits that are stuck and haven't been able to take that next step so wow. he went into this super detailed life into the Stone Age era, Ooh. where oh, he was, well, I asked him, he said he was a warrior, and I asked, well, what kind of weapons do you carry? And he didn't know that word, weapons. So I said, what in nature do you use as, as a tool? And he says, oh, we use, we sharpen the rocks so we can skin the big animals. Oh, so wow. we have the, the animals when it's the three moons of rain, we have the the meat from the animals. Very and interesting. And then he, he said, and he was going like this on his leg, and I go, what are you doing? And he goes, oh, so there's this beat, and there's a fire, and I'm making so that the people can move. And I said, oh, I bet that's the beginning of rudimentary music mm -hmm. and dancing. Right, ritual. And he said, mm -hmm. he said the healer has this special the special person who makes this this stuff from nature that they put on the hurt and mm -hmm. then they do the movement and the sound and he was wow. uh, saying the sound <laughs> like, oh he was actually doing the sound yes so you know back then they must have been really aware of the mm -hmm. rhythms Absolutely. of nature very connected with mm -hmm. nature mm -hmm. yeah. when he died he wanted to go to a special place to die. Mm -hmm. So I asked, well, what, what, are the, what, are, what do you believe happens after you die? And he said, oh, the meat leaves the bones, and then it's just bones. I said, <laughs> okay, okay. But then when he left his body, he's going, oh my God, I'm, there's me down there, but there's me here, it's still alive. I'm still alive. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> That's an awesome way to really have first-person experience with what happens when you die. Yeah. 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 This, uh, this um, process is so informative on so many levels. There's so many oh, things to discover. That's amazing. And he brought that with such, so impactful that he still has carried that forward to his current life. Right. And in helping souls, you know, what, what do I do next? Right. <laughs> right. Well, there is, um, a, there is a position for people who do that where they usher people into the death process called mm -hmm. psychopomp. Yeah, that's the name of the, you know, instead of saying a shaman or something like that. Yeah. Um, and they help to usher the soul into the spiritual world. Beautiful. Yeah, very fun. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. So let's talk about hypnotherapy and, and see if people uh, have some questions let's about... see if there's any questions so far. And past lives. Uh, let's see. I did a regression, but... Um, it's see, hard to see. Yeah, that, it's hard to it? read. I did a regression where it was unable to get into a state where I could see the past. Oh, I want to address yep, that. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. 
because this happens really quite often and um, sometimes it takes a person a, a couple of sessions to really be able to let go and go into the hypnotic state and so it depends on the uh, the rapport that you have with the therapist and the skill level of the therapist to be able to adjust to whatever your resistance is. So um, not being able to go into the trance, you know, really is your resistance, but the therapist should have the tools to, to help you understand what is the resistance, what is the fear or the hesitation, and then help you move through that to achieve that. Um, so really you're talking about being able to get to the level where um, you could start to see those memories. The other thing that happens a lot when, when people are having a, a trouble with um, actually seeing the regression or, or immersing themselves into it is that perhaps they are, um, you know, trying to see visions when actually they are more of a kinesthetic feeler. So oftentimes you can switch gears instead of trying to see the movie, for instance, see uh, pictures and, and environments and everything, go more into how am I feeling? Um, is there pain or pleasure or, um, uh, you know, can I feel the environment? Even like um, pretend you're blind. You know, if you were in your room right now and you had your eyes closed, you know, what would you know about this environment or what could you feel if you, if you were just kind of, you know, feeling the walls or feeling a tree or whatever. And sometimes that helps to get over that first resistance. But with past life regression, because we don't have a lot of, you know, scrapbooks and picture books and stories from our parents, um, we really have to rely on our imagination. And in the beginning, it'll feel like you're making it up. And I always tell my clients, just go with that. You know, it, it doesn't matter if it feels like you're making it up this time. And typically, um, they'll, they'll move from making up a story and pretty soon you can tell they're actually bringing in those memories from other lifetimes but it's getting over that first kind of hesitation um, where you feel like you're making it up. Yeah, I think our, our own self-doubt is, mm -hmm. is the block, but ooh, Off it's your it. Yeah. And it's like exercising a muscle, the more you're familiar with the hypnotic state in the territory, Absolutely. The, the, deeper, the deeper you can go. Yeah, I have an example of that. I had a, a client years ago who was um, a man and he was an engineer, very, linear thinking, right? He wanted to ex experience a past life, but, you know, he was kind of tight in that way, right? You know, I have to know it's true, I have to know it's fact, it has to make sense. And so what I did is I told him, just forget about doing the past life right now, but is there a time in history when you feel like you've had a past life? So, you know, in any time, any era, any location. And he said, yes, I always thought that I was a cowboy in the Wild West, out on the plains, right? And so I said, okay, close your eyes and just, you know, tell me a story about being a cowboy. How do you imagine it? And he said, I'm riding my horse and, you know, it's the big open plains and um, I'm riding my horse and, I'm, and I come up on this wagon that has been broken. You know, it's just, it's a wreck of a wagon and there's a couple of skeletons, you know, obviously the people who were driving the wagon um, were killed and there's uh, trunks and, you know, items scattered around. And, and he's kind of looking around and, and investigating everything. And then um, he, I said, I, I don't even remember what I said. He said, oh, I know. He said, I said, what are you wearing? I guess, I can't remember how we got into that conversation, but 
he said, I'm wearing white man's pants. And I, I you know, because I thought he was making up a story about being a cowboy. And he was even shocked. He goes, I'm uh -huh. wearing white man pants. And I said, uh -huh. well, what do you mean? And he goes, these don't belong to me. These are white man pants. I got them out of the trunk. And I said, well, look down at your arm and what do you see? And he goes, I'm an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so then we knew that he had gone from the initial vision of making up a story to now he's actually in the event experiencing it because he found things that were surprising to him, <laughs> things that he didn't expect. So those are the kinds of things that we're looking for in past life regression yeah, are the cool. surprises, emotional connection to whatever is happening yeah. there. And you can always tell when people's pop is actually in, right. in the life that it switches it, over. It definitely yeah. does. And you, you'll be able to feel it too. It's like, whoa, it's a, yeah. it, 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 cognitively, it's, it's, Diff it's different, different. different part of your consciousness. Right, because like for me, the way I experience it is when I'm making up a story, it feels like I'm, you know, activating the frontal lobe and, you know, it's all up here. So if you think about when you've made up a story for a child or told a lie, that's making up a story, mm -hmm. you know, it feels like it's coming up from here. And then when you move into memory, for me, it feels like the information is coming from the back of my head. Yeah. Now I'm digging deeper and this yeah. memory is coming up from yeah, for me. Yeah. I, it feels like my third eye is very activated. Because uh -huh. your third eye is, um, has all the information, the past, present, future. When you are in that third eye energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. It opens up that channel mm -hmm. to the higher self or the subconscious mind. The quantum field. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, Mary, tell us about your upcoming courses. Oh. You, if you ever consider becoming a past life regressionist, hypnotherapist, or wellness coach, you've come to the right place because this is mm. she's an amazing coach. Oh, Hands you. on all of her her knowledge is uh, <laughs> um, gathered from yeah, yeah. <laughs> gathered and gathered from many lifetimes. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but in sure. this lifetime, I started with past life regression in the mid '80s. I was actually interested in it much earlier um, in my youth, um, but then in the '80s, started uh, providing past lives for other people, and then got certified as a hypnotherapist in. 1997 mm -hmm. and opened my more formalized practice as it is now and um, I've gathered tools healing tools hypnotherapy um, NLP tools psychology shamanistic uh, tools um, from all my decades of, wow. of working and learning and studying and um, you know providing services for people and what I do is I've taken um, all of that and put it into my two courses, my signature course, which is the Hypnotherapy and Past Life, and then my, uh, my second course, which is Transpersonal Wellness Coach. And together, that is all the tools that I use um, in my career. So you really wouldn't need anything else, but a lot of, the, a lot of my graduates our natural paths, acupuncturists, massage therapists, coaches, yeah. on and on and on, Reiki masters, and they're combining all of this body of knowledge with other techniques that they're already using. And it's just beautiful, but I do, I, instead of you going out and finding all these different tools and learning them from all different teachers and spending all that money. Is your one package deal right here. You get it all right By the way, here. the link to her courses are in in my profile. You just go to the link tree and there's a link. It'll, it'll, oh, good. it'll say become a certified hypnotherapist uh, if you want to know how to, you know, how, how to, to go, look at go about um, at least looking at it or signing up. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So continue. Oh, well, that's kind of it. Um, <laughs> well, that's the signature course. And then what happened, because I've been studying spirituality since the 80s um, with a teacher and, you know, really immersing myself into a lot of 
techniques and knowledge and experiences, um, I've put together the Transpersonal Wellness Coach uh, certification as well. And there I've, I've modified some of the shamanic tools like soul retrieval and sacred journeys. Um, and, and I've modified it so that you can do it in more of a clinical hypnotherapy session. So it, rather than drumming and rattling and, and all of that, which you can do if you wish, um, this is very seamless within the hypnotherapy session. You can go right into soul retrieval if that's what's needed or right into sacred journeys. Then we also do, um, I teach you how to help people to communicate with their spirit guides. We go over a lot of details about all the different types of spirits that are out there and there's quite a setup for that. And then there's, um, what else is in there? Yeah. Oh, Can I interject something? I've, yeah. I've had uh, people set the intention to meet their guides, and I've had some amazing sessions where people actually meet their guides. Yes. One, one client, uh, her, he, her guide taught her how to channel, and I was communicating with this uh, sixth dimensional being who said mm -hmm. he was, uh, he said, you, I said, how do I refer to you as? And he said, I can best be explained in your awareness as a sequence of numbers. Oh, I, wow. I exist in a tetrahedron. You may call me 7,000. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's deep. Uh, um, so in the course, I teach you how to handle that sort of thing, <laughs> um, how to proceed, how to extract that information. And then also we go into extraterrestrials and UFOs. And um, what happens if you have clients who have missing time, um, you know, and maybe discover that they've been abducted? Uh, we go into a lot of, of the, you know, yeah. edgier things. All the woo-woo. All the, the woo-woo stuff. Woo -woo stuff. Yes, exactly, the fun <laughs> stuff. So it's quite an education. And um, like I said, it prepares you to be able to work with pretty much anybody's issues from yeah. Pain and addiction to these spiritual here. Keep going. The, to these spiritual issues as well. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I'll talk while she's looking at your questions. <laughs> um, so the uh, somebody somebody calls us two stunning cougars. <laughs> oh, I love it. I too love funny. It. Um, <laughs> so the transpersonal course. Uh, both of these courses are online. And then with, included with the courses are live Zoom calls with me and in the class. So you get to meet other practitioners. You get to have your questions answered. I teach you even more live on Zoom. And we, um, I do a demo. And so I'm working on somebody in the class, in front of the class, so that you can see uh, how I work and you know my decision points and how I navigate through um, through the session. Do we have a question? Um, no, I didn't see any specific. Just some nice, lovely comments. Oh, so thank okay, you. great. Thank you so much. Well, we want your questions too. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Anyway. Well, I have more questions for oh, you. Oh, you do. Okay. Well, maybe to explain to people, you know, what is, why are there, there's so many, so much negative connotation out there about hypnotherapy, you know, I think people think it's brainwashing and, and, right, <laughs> and right. so let's set people straight on what it is and what it isn't and how it differs from stage hypnosis. Oh, okay, yeah. So I think that that reputation um, came about even from the history of the development of yeah. hypnotherapy where a lot of people were going into trance and kind of losing consciousness or awareness. And there was, um, and then it developed into what, what I would call stage hypnosis. And you've probably seen them on TV or in Las Vegas. Um, it, some of these shows where they can put a person into a state where they do things they could never imagine doing. You know, they can dance like Elvis or sing like Lady Gaga or they forget numbers or, or whatever. And there's a lot of interesting behavior. And so <laughs> that, that reputation of being able to have mind control. Yeah, control it, another person. Right, and mm -hmm. control. And so the difference, you have stage hypnosis, but then hypnotherapy 
is hypnosis with therapy. And there are two types of hypnotherapy as well. So even if we go over on the therapeutic side, there's the style that um, the therapist uses a script. So they find out what you wanna work on, they create a story, put you into trance, tell you the story and bring you out. Um, to me, that is still the old fashioned way. And uh, that's, I would call that really surface level stuff. You're and still surface. in that alpha brain wave. And our, our technique goes way deeper. Way deeper. Way deeper. And so what I teach and what I've developed over these years is it's very client centered and um, we're in dialogue with the client. They will always remember um, everything we talked about. They'll remember their experiences. Imagine going deep, yeah. deep like, or deep into a script version to try to do it a past life. You couldn't even do it. Mm -hmm. Plus, you know, they, they come out of it not remembering what it is that happened or what did they say or, or yeah. maybe they don't say anything at all. In and this way, it's very, it's very engaged. We're still mm -hmm. having a conversation. And I want to emphasize that you are always, the client is always in control. You, Absolutely. Yeah, you could go as deep or as light as, as you're comfortable with. And you could also say, oh, I need to have a potty break, or I need a glass of water, or I don't want to talk about that today. Yeah. Can we, you know, talk about something else? Even while you're in trance, you can take care of yourself in the method that I have. But at the same time, you're deeply connected, and, and the method that I teach, you know, my, my, my graduates as well, um, you're always um, aware of what's going on and you'll remember it. So it's, it's very beautiful. And for me, the goal has been um, to, to increase people's awareness and consciousness, not just fix their problems, right? You need to know where the problem came from, how did you set it up, why, how we're going to resolve it, get it resolved, but then you also know how to not create it again. If we, if somebody else just comes in and fixes your problem, you know, how do you know when you're just going back and redeveloping it, you know, creating it again? Right. Just the, the likelihood of recreating it. Is yeah. Very much so. Exactly. so this is, we could say a holistic approach because we want to really absolutely the, all the energies uh, emotional mental spiritual physical mm -hmm. um, yeah working on all those levels absolutely it's such fun work you know it, and and it's so it's so rewarding so lovely to experience too mm -hmm. a lot of my clients say don't bring me out i just want to stay here it's so <laughs> relaxing and mm -hmm. They're finding out things about themselves. It's a lot of self-discovery. Oh, yeah. And of watching the light bulbs go up. <laughs> right, I mean, yeah. Connecting life. events in their lives. You know, they maybe they have a habit or an addiction or, or something that's going on, and they didn't realize where that came from. You know, and, yeah. and sometimes then it's from that. childhood, sometimes it's from a past life. Sometimes it can be. These lives are not even human. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it can come from a lot of places. Exactly. Mm. What else do you have? Let me see if there's any questions. Actually, I'm okay. going on another while well, I check for questions. Um, yeah, well, here's a good question. How did you first learn about yourself from hypnotherapy? Did you learn about yourself through this? these oh my modalities gosh. yourself? Is oh. that why you do this now? Yeah, um, I was um, in the 80s. I was, um, yeah, well, I still am. Uh, in a spiritual group and we were doing a lot of um, inner work and past life regression and mild trance levels, guided visualization similar to what you might experience in a yoga session where they put you into that mental state or, or doing meditation. And then when people were asking me to provide past lives for them, um, I was introduced to hypnotherapy, and actually at first I was like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever, and not, not, I just didn't engage in it, and so it took me a few months, and then I revisited it, and I thought, okay, let me check this out a little deeper, 
And it really, it did turn the light bulb on for me because I was doing this work and it was helpful and people were getting information about their past lives. But once I added the hypnotherapy to that, we could go from just doing kind of a sightseeing tour of a past life. You know, what were you doing? Who were you? What did you look like? Where were you? All of that to actually driving that into um, issues that they wanted to resolve, like issues in relationships or addictions or you know money problems, abundance issues. Where did this come from? Um, Where did phobias come from? Phobias, all of these different things. Um, and um, I, I was able to help them more efficiently and then when we get into the past life, we can also do the healing work there. So the work that we do, um, whether it's Tina or myself, um, we can, you know, the work that we can do in hypnotherapy for this life, we can also go into the past life and do that work there as well. So for me, um, it, I had a little resistance to the idea, but once I got into it, it just opened up the world for me. And in fact, I used to do astrology and tarot readings, and that was more my primary business. And I had a metaphysical bookstore, all of that. And when I moved to the Seattle area, to Bellevue, I thought, which direction am, am I gonna go in? Am I gonna do hypnotherapy and past lives, or am I going to do psychic work? And I just, I thought, you know what? When I do psychic work, I can tell you what the problem is. I can tell you about your relationships. I can tell you about your money. But when I take you into hypnotherapy, you become your own psychic. You can see about your future. You can see everything you need to know about your relationships. And we can actually, instead of just knowing, oh, I need to change these behaviors, I need to stop doing this, we can actually go in and make the change. And so for me, even when people call me for readings, I'll do some readings for people, but I really encourage people to do the hypnotherapy instead because it can create those powerful changes within you and that self-knowledge rather than just hearing it from somebody else. If I tell you, you need to do this, and this is gonna happen, you're gonna come away and say, well, you know, maybe she's right, maybe she's not. You know, um, how do I get started making those changes? What am I gonna do now? Rather than coming to the hypnotherapy and just taking care of it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So, yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's just, it, it's an amazing thing. It's a beautiful career because you're independent, you're self-employed, you can make this as lucrative as you want, mm -hmm. yeah. as lucrative. And you can branch out from there. You can write books, give lectures, have podcasts, be interviewed. Yeah. Um, you know, you can, there's so many avenues uh, to, to go, to, to um, branch out with yeah, streams of revenue. If, you know, helping others is a calling for you, um, especially if you're already in the medical field or the alternative field. You know, more and more of us are not happy with the job <laughs> out there and they're exerting more and more control and they're, the cost of the wages is not meeting the <laughs> rising cost of living. This can bring you so much freedom. It can put you back in your career driver's seat. Right. Yeah. You're not going to get fired. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Uh, for me, it was a scary jump. Yeah, uh, it, it can was, be. It, it can and, be. and I'm so glad I took the leap. You learn so much about yourself. And that is no way I'll go back to, to working for anyone else. Yeah. Um, thank yeah. you, Mary, for empowering <laughs> me. Yes, on you're so welcome. many levels. You're welcome. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah. What other questions do you have? I was curious. Um, uh, let's see. Some of the, your favorite transformations that you've seen happen with some of your clients, do they oh. stand out? Well, um, yeah, I mean, it, sort of. It's funny because 
we have confidentiality with our clients and I have a way of, you know, at the end of the session, just kind of putting it over there and then I don't um, keep everything fresh in my mind, mm -hmm. particularly. Like if you had a session years ago or even a few months ago and you yeah. said, hey, I'm working on that thing, I'd probably oh, say, yeah, what just, thing? Yeah. What, what, what is it Me you're too. working on again? I don't Me remember. <laughs> um, but I did have um, a, a smoking client that was really mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. and his wife called me at first and that's a little bit of a caution because it's like yeah. does he really want to quit smoking but she told me she said our, our marriage is on the rocks because I can't take it anymore and he needs to quit so I said well, okay put him on the phone because <laughs> I need to make sure he's engaged with this yeah. and he said yeah 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 I know <laughs> I have to do it Okay. And, and I told him, when, when I do smoking sessions, I don't make a person um, quit, you know, like, smoke your last cigarette before you come in, we're going to break them up. No, it's just come in and, you know, let's take a look at what's going, to, what's going on. We're going to find out the root cause. We're going to go in there and you'll make a decision. Maybe you'll cut it down by a few cigarettes. Maybe you'll cut it in half. Maybe you'll quit. But that's going to be up to you. But, you know, it may take a few sessions. Um, and so there's no pressure. Well, he came in. He smoked over a pack a day and had for decades. Hmm. And this is why his wife, he, she said, hmm. I'm not going to be with you. You're, you're heading towards cancer. It's going to be yeah, a very ugly yeah. <laughs> thing. It stinks. It's expensive. I'm ton done with this, you know. Anyway, we had our session um, in this case, it was about two hours, and in the end, he the light bulbs came on because he understood why he was smoking, and he was on board 100% with not doing it anymore. He walked out the door, and, you know, I'm not going to smoke anymore. So, okay, okay. So, um, the next time I saw him, his wife was there, and she said, you have saved my marriage because he has not smoked since. And he got me on the phone. He started sending me all of his friends who were, who were smoking. And some months went by and he again called me and he said, you saved my life. And not only that, but I didn't tell you that I was also drinking heavily. And he said, I have not had a cigarette or a drink mm -hmm. since I saw you. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, oh, that feels so good. Yeah. And I have my own shit, drinking and smoking stories oh, to say too. You yeah. know? It's, it's such a difference of going you know, months or years to regular talk therapy or other programs. And this, exactly. I, you, can, you can stop an addiction and just, uh, right. and I, I say yeah. one to five sessions. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. I had another um, young lady who was addicted to alcohol. And by the time that I saw her, she was already in a in a, like a halfway house in a program, mm -hmm. living with other ex-alcoholics. But you know, it was a struggle. She, you know, it's sort of like taking discipline to not have that drink. And so I worked with her, and in her case, we did past life regression, and we went to, you know, I said, let's go to a lifetime where this started, because addictions will. If you're addicted to something in this lifetime, it will be, it will show up in other lifetimes. It's yeah, not going exactly. to be an isolated issue. Yeah, it tends to be an ongoing pattern. If you don't learn it mm -hmm. in one life, you're, it, it will present itself it's in your current. There. Yeah. Yeah. So I took her to a lifetime, and in that lifetime, she was a man and um, married to the love of his life, and the wife died. And he was so beside himself, he, you know, withdrew from society, he started drinking, and he drank until he died. And then we went to another lifetime, and again, you know, the, the first signs of stress in life, you know, un, unmanageable stress, in that lifetime she was drinking as well. And then we brought it back, you know, so what we do with addictions is, we can go in and do the healing work in each of those lifetimes where we're noticing that same addiction, like alcohol coming, you know, coming into the picture. Then we came back to this lifetime and 
we did the healing work here where um, in each of those lifetimes we're showing that person how they could make different choices and and how that life would turn out better and so we're actually helping them to move to alternative universes or parallel yeah. parallel what we call um, shifting aspects so that in even in that past life they've moved from using alcohol as a crutch to coming over here and being a little more uncomfortable for a while but learning a different pattern and so we're helping them do that in these other lifetimes it's kind of advanced stuff and it's complex to just throw it out there and expect everybody to Welcome understand to <laughs> but it works and so then when I when we came back here we did some healing work in this lifetime so it was one two-hour session I saw her it was probably two or three years later and um, they had a big metaphysical convention I just happened to be in the lobby talking to a musician who who was playing in the lobby and we were chatting and she came running up to me I didn't even really realize who she was in the beginning but she was about eight months pregnant she came running up and gave me a big hug and she said um, I'm having a baby I'm married I am so happy wow. and I've never even looked back on alcohol again she said that changed everything she didn't have to depend on her sponsors and her halfway houses and detox and everything. She was just done with it and was having a beautiful life. Wow. And it was just like, wow. I mean, it, that I pays every, I mean, to have that as part of your karma, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that you could help people at such a deep level turn around their lives it's, yes. it's just amazing and here's the thing you know f first get past where you're stuck do your healing and then you know help help others so there are links in my profile to either book a session with me or to sign up for one of mary's courses to become a certified hypnotherapist and yeah. wellness coach and yeah. past life, you know all of that juicy stuff so um, the, the fun yeah. thing about working now is everybody got used to Zoom and mm -hmm. you don't have to set up an office. You can work with people around the world from the comfort of your own home on Zoom. I don't see any no, live. I don't. I don't see any oh, live. I'm still live. about 50-50. 50% 50, 50, 50 yeah. in person, 50% online. So it's but total it optional. Yeah. yeah. Where massage therapists had, mm -hmm. you know, during COVID, they were out of a job, you know, a lot of people were, but we just switched over to Zoom and even local clients, I, I tell them, no, I'm, I work on Zoom, so I don't have to maintain an office, I don't have to prepare for them in that way. And I have clients in South Africa, in Europe, in uh, the Caribbean, in Mexico, Canada, Australia, um, you know, yeah, you yeah. just set it up all across the United States. People find me, and I've had people be surprised that we could do it remotely. Yeah, you know, how can how can that? And in some cases, it's actually better because you're in the comfort of your own home. After a session, you're so relaxed, mm -hmm. and then you don't have to jump into that into you know real life traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of traffic yeah. right here. And as I say, as long as you've got you know good sound, I recommend earbuds mm -hmm. or. or um, and we're quantumly entangled anyway. Right, the energy is really the same. Yeah. And with Zoom, I can keep an eye on the, the client. Because if you were in my office, we would talk for maybe five minutes, set our goal, get ready, and then the rest of the time you have your eyes closed anyway. <laughs> Might as well be at home. Yeah. And then I recommend people, you know, afterwards, just save a little time where you don't have to jump back into work or, yeah, totally or anything. In integrate. Yeah, and yeah. have a cup of tea and do some journaling. And um, my clients are like, oh, this is better than ever. I don't ever want to come to the office <laughs> again. You know, yeah. I can just do it right here. So Stay in your sweats. It's yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's, such, it's so Let me fun. see if any questions have come in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Past lives, anything about her energy.
energy. While you're doing that, I'll tell you about a past life. I okay. Did, I've gone on several retreats where, well, I've led some. I led a retreat to Machu Picchu in Peru, all around Peru, and we did past lives there um, in England and Ireland. Um, wow. And then I've been a participant in several retreats where we're doing past lives. And I did one in um, Ireland. Um, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> it was so amazing. But this one part, we were at the Malahide Castle, which was is just north of Dublin. And I you know, wandered around and did the normal stuff for a while. And then I sat on a bench just looking at the castle and just allowed my, my vision to get soft. And all of a sudden I saw myself in a room in the castle and my sister um, lived there and I was a, kind of a long-term visitor because my husband was off at war and, and I was pregnant. And so they decided that I would be safer living here in this castle. And my other sister was there and she was a healer and I'm, I'm laying down trying to deliver this baby. So I'm sitting here looking at the castle and suddenly I see myself delivering a baby and it's so hard and struggling. And all of a sudden just, just and I'm lifting up like this and I'm seeing it all from the ceiling. And I see my dead body with blood and they did deliver the baby, the baby survived. And it was very, very interesting because as I was coming up, I, I was like, oh, wait, I'm dead. You know, that realization of what's happening. And I was checking myself. It's like, am I upset about that? You know, you know, there's my baby, there's my sisters, and I'm just like leaving. And I was just like, no, you know, and it was just fine. And I went on with my path and they went on with theirs. But what's interesting is when you have that first person visceral experience, that's yours forever. I know what it feels like to leave the body and... I had one of a similar experience oh, in, a, in a past and life. And it's beautiful, oh actually. Oh my God. You can't even describe it, that feeling of... But the just release. release. Yeah. yeah, that release. Yeah, it really is a, a transition. It is. <laughs> and it helps because as we age, um, you know, a lot of times we have more and more fear about death. And it it now it's like, no, I, you know, I want to stay alive and I want more adventures. But if that time comes, and, and especially I'm not going to ruin my good adventures now by worrying about whether or not I'm going to die, right? It's just like, I'm going to have fun. And when that time comes, I'll, yeah. I'll handle another adventure. Well. Exactly. So that was, that was one of my wow. many experiences. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, and I also, for another example, did we have a question? Uh, no, just more comments. comments. Okay. More comments. So, um, uh, also, yeah. uh, another, um, regression that I did with a woman in this lifetime she her business she's retired now but her business was um, medicinal herbs and tinctures and oils you know they would import them and and distribute them um, for healing you know that kind of thing and she came to me for a regression and it was beautiful she went back to you know, an earlier time and more of an indigenous kind of lifetime. Yeah. Um, in the, it seemed like it was either tropical or jungle kind of yeah. um, environment. And she would, she was a healer. She used medis uh, plant medicine in that lifetime as well. And she could walk through nature, and it, it was like the plants were talking to her. They, like even which leaf that she should pick off of the plant yeah. that was ready, you know, it would be like, pick yeah. me, I'm the one, you know, or whatever. And it, like, it, I'm sure it was rather psychedelic what she was experiencing, but the, the plants would talk to her. They would indicate what part of the plant to harvest wow. and when they were ready to be harvested 
and yeah. what to use and everything. And so then what we were doing was for her to gather that information really clearly and how she did it. What was the mind frame? What was the energy, you know, most likely third eye type of energy? What was that energy that allowed you to do that? And so she gathered up that skill. And then when I brought her out of trance, she said, yeah, I think I can still do it. Wow. So she and I are friends. And so um, it was probably only six months or a year ago that I asked her. And we did this session probably five years ago. Yeah. And a few, a few months ago, I said, by the way, can you still do that? You know, what happens when you go out in the garden? She said, yes, I can still, you know, switch on my mind in a certain way that allows me yeah. to commune with the Yeah, with the like that language, that, because uh, everything, that everything communicates with us. Yeah, everything. that energy. Yeah. 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 So Very that fun. one was really, really fun. <laughs> um, but you can bring those those talents. I've worked with musicians, writers, um, and you know people that want to go back um, and they connect. Bring forth those, uh, any, that create creativity, creativity, creativity yeah. on, on any level. Yeah, they can sure. go in. And um, I had one one guy that uh, was playing the guitar, and so we took him into a past. I took him into a past life. And he played the guitar in that lifetime, blues, this really mm. great jazzy blues. Mm. And he was playing and playing and playing. And, but while he's doing it, there's the part of him that's in this lifetime that is paying attention to how does the body feel and how is the mind working and the fingers working um, and you know, really practicing. And I allowed him to, to practice in hypnosis in the past life for some time and so when he came out of that and he he does yeah. play gigs he plays yeah. you know in a band of the body and, and he, huh? yes he said it just elevated mm -hmm. his skill sets so incredibly uh, yeah because he uh, could bring that same mindset sure. and, and be able to do that i hear that i hear higher self say it's it's the things get activated certain sounds can Re, uh, uh, you know, um, activate our neural transmitters so that we can, you know, remember that again and bring bring forward uh -huh. that, that those skills. Yeah, so yeah. cool. You know, we are I know. we are truly ageless, multidimensional beings, and <laughs> and <laughs> the universe is far more complex yes. and um, yes. incredible than we can even imagine. Yeah, there's there's a lot more out there, and the mm -hmm. more we learn and grow the more we learn and grow from there you know i mean it just mm. there's so much more but what's beautiful is mm. that when my clients come there's always something there for me to learn whether it's mm. um something in their behavior that needs to be corrected or um in their physical body that it, we're drawing correlations between the stressors and the ensuing um physical condition or we're going into past lives and learning about society in another time and place like like your guy with the you know the the rhythms and the healing and all of that um there is something to learn from each and every client oh. that is so um expansion yeah. expanding for us yeah yeah you know realizations another in that same session um, he also was saying there was a time when our people just spoke in Uggs and had no fire until the sky people came down. Ooh, and I said, oh, describe the sky people. And he said, well, they're, they're long and thin and gray and they've got three of these on oh. their hands and their toes before the sky people came down. So that's obviously his historic wow. evidence of alien assistance. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so cool. And we see that in the hieroglyphs in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been to Egypt and seen those. And then mm -hmm. also um, flying over the Nazca lines in Peru. I got to do that. Whoa. And the Nazca lines are these incredibly huge drawings that you can only see really? from the sky. Oh, wow. Yeah, you yeah. have to be in an airplane just to see uh -huh. them. Because if you're on the ground, it just looks like Yes. you know a, a line in the dirt and um and there's 
you're flying around and you're seeing um, all these different animals and different, just different things. And then on one, mm. on, a, on a slope of a hill, they have an alien. Wow. And it's like, okay, this is thousands of years old and they were drawing the alien. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. yeah, there's that. Oh yeah, probably being helped currently too, but. Helped and <laughs> investigated, because some of them are sure. not helpful. Yeah, there's yeah. both. Yeah. That's a yeah. whole other conversation. That's a big conversation. The energies. Yeah, I just look at it as love versus fear and the energies. But but also within ourselves, we've been giving it in this current current uh, time. It's so apparent on earth that we, so many of us, are in that position to choose love over fear, and you know, be with the new earth as she ascends into her next layer of consciousness, or. Yeah, or um, usher that take, take the longer route. Those who are not aligned will have a more difficult time. So it's another reason to do your do your healing. You know, focus to within. And uh, to come to the conclusion for today, um, once again, we're both hypnotherapists, and uh, I um, I. One of my trainers is Ms. Mary Lee, who is currently offering courses for you to become certified as a hypnotherapist, past life progression, wellness coach, and any of the above. Go to the links in my bio, and it's all there. And I want to thank you, Mary Lee, for this beautiful, um, enlightening conversation. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And thank you for everybody who's attended today as well. It's yes, really been either, a pleasure. Either live or on the, one of the recordings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Mary Lee LeBay, and um, you can take a look at the link that Tina has put in her bio, and then you, you can go to my website too from there. Go, go there first and check everything out. And then you'll see how you can find me as well. Yeah. All right. Thank you for taking the time today to be with us. Thank you.